So for those of you who are new to this channel and want to know how old I am, this Godzilla movie is 10 months younger than I am. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah came out in 1991, is the third film in the Heisei Godzilla era, the second one to be directed by Kazuki Omori, and the very first Godzilla movie I ever saw. So this movie very much holds a special place in my heart in terms of nostalgia, because without seeing this movie, I don't think I would have ever gotten into the Godzilla series. So Godzilla has been in the ocean for a good amount of time after his fight with Biollante. Suddenly, a mysterious UFO appears, and and it turns out it's a UFO from the future. The crew is mainly piloted by a bunch of Americans, but they are accompanied by one Japanese girl. They came from the 23rd century with a warning to the people of the 20th century that Godzilla is going to destroy the entire country. And you almost imagine everyone to go, yeah, how is that different from any other day here in Japan? But the people of the 23rd century actually propose that they can get rid of Godzilla for good. So apparently there's a detailed book on Godzilla in the future that explains his origin, that he was originally a Godzilla-saurus, and he was living in the Lagos Islands during World War II and got irradiated by H-bombs. So the Japanese woman from the 23rd century, an android named M11, and a few select individuals from the 20th century, including Miki Sagusa, go back in time to the 1940s to try to get rid of the Godzilla-saurus so that Godzilla could never be created. However, the people from the 23rd century had these three little fuzzball creatures called Dorats, which you look at these things and you'll have a better appreciation for the Porgs in The Last Jedi. Because they put these three little Dorats in place of the Godzilla Saurus, so when the H bomb goes off, it merges them all together to create King Ghidorah. And the people from the future, who I should point out again are American, unleash King Ghidorah across Japan to destroy the entire country so that they can tell the people of Japan how to rebuild the country. Uh, I'll get into that a little later. But anyway, the Japanese woman, whose name is Emmy, rebels and helps everyone from the 20th century fight back against the aliens. Aliens? Might as well be, because they have a giant spaceship, to pretty much try and save Japan, and this also results in Godzilla returning for some mysterious reason, even though they erased him from existence. Th there's actually a reason, and I'll get into that later. It results in Godzilla and King Ghidorah finally facing off against each other in one of the more brutal fights between the two monsters. Now, as I mentioned, this was the very first Godzilla movie that I ever saw, and I loved it when it came out. I should elaborate that the very first... Godzilla in name movie I saw was the Roland Emmerich movie, but when I rented that movie from Blockbuster, my dad insisted that we rent one of the older Godzilla movies, and ironically, this movie came out the same year I was born, even though this was the first Godzilla movie that I am technically older than. And while I didn't like the Roland Emmerich movie even as a kid, I fell in love with this movie, but watching it with an adult perspective... Could I just be holding nostalgic attachment? Because I made a top 10 list of Godzilla movies after the 1954 one, obviously, and this landed at number one. And if you were to take all the Godzilla movies, this one ranked at number two for me, only behind the original 1954. But after watching it again, I might have to push it back a little bit. Probably, we'll see how the rest of the series goes, but right now, it's at number five in terms of my favorite Godzilla movies out there. I'll list out all my favorite Godzilla movies once I finish this whole series, but this movie doesn't quite leave the same impact that it did when I was younger. But I still think this is the best of the second Godzilla series. I do love The Return of Godzilla, and I think that's more of a well-made film than this one, but this movie right here is so much more entertaining, and there's just a lot about it that I do like. One thing is that Akira Ifakube is back doing the score. He came out of retirement after his daughter kind of convinced him to do so because when Godzilla vs. Biollante came out they used a lot of his old themes and his daughter pretty much said why don't you just do the next movie yourself so he did which is funny because I believe one of the statements that he made when asked to score the return of Godzilla was I don't write music for monsters that are 80 meters tall okay but Godzilla in this movie is a hundred meters tall what is it about that specific height Maybe it was a joke, because I read this in text, and context is everything. 
But anyway, the score is fantastic. It does recycle a lot of previous themes. Obviously, you got the King Ghidorah score, but it recycles the original airplane attack theme in the original Rodan. It recycles the battle theme from King Kong vs. Godzilla, but done at a higher speed. But this movie is ultimately responsible for combining both Godzilla themes and giving us the definitive Godzilla theme. And Ifakube's score just works wonders when it comes to the Godzilla films. Let's talk about King Ghidorah for a second, because this is one point of controversy that some fans have with this movie, and I said one point. A lot of fans are kind of antsy about King Ghidorah's origin in this movie because in the original series, he was just a space monster that spawned from a meteor and destroyed Venus. Simple enough right there, but in this movie, he's merged with three cute pets to become a weapon for people from the future to try to pretty much colonize the past. And I look at it like this. You can create a different backstory for a fictional character as long as you maintain the spirit. And the spirit of King Ghidorah is very much intact. In fact, he's still controlled by the film's villains, just like he was controlled by three different races of aliens in the original Showa era. So he still very much is King Ghidorah that we're familiar with, just with a different background. It's just like when you compare the Jack Nicholson Joker to the Heath Ledger Joker. Sure, Heath Ledger's Joker is very different from the comics in terms of he didn't fall into a pool of acid it's just white makeup, but the spirit of the Joker is very much there. And the spirit of King Ghidorah is still very much within this movie. The fight scenes between King Ghidorah and Godzilla are awesome. There's tons of explosions. Godzilla's firing his atomic breath at King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah shooting his gravity beams back. And one thing that I think is really cool is that Ken Satsuma gets to use a move on King Ghidorah that Haru Nakajima used on him when he played Hedorah in Godzilla vs. Hedorah. And that's grabbing the enemy monster's tail and pretty much lifting them up, down, up, down. So it's kind of poetic that he played a monster that Godzilla used that same move on and he would go on to play Godzilla and use that exact same move on not only King Ghidorah but Batra in the next movie. And Godzilla is even more brutal than he ever was before because he fires his atomic breath on King Ghidorah's middle head and pretty much destroys the head. It flies away, decapitated. And in the past movies, when King Ghidorah would retreat, Godzilla would just kind of watch as King Ghidorah retreated. This time around, Godzilla is more ruthless and is like, no, you're gonna die. Because at the end of the first fight, King Ghidorah retreats and Godzilla blasts a hole in King Ghidorah's wing and he falls into the ocean where he's presumed dead because he drowned. And unlike the previous films, Godzilla is still not very friendly to humanity, so now Godzilla ends up being the problem, so Emi decides to go back to the 23rd century and revive King Ghidorah with 23rd century technology, thus creating Mecha King Ghidorah, which is identified as its own monster. And the final battle between Godzilla and Mecha King Ghidorah is still very entertaining, even if most of it is just kind of them standing in one spot, exchanging beam weapons to each other. Now let's talk about the biggest controversy in the movie, the idea that this could possibly be anti-American. So as an American myself, I am not greatly offended by what this movie presents, but I can definitely see how people would be offended. Because for me, I've been with the Godzilla series since childhood that it's kind of easy for me to go, look, just watch the monster fight scenes. Just watch Godzilla blow shit up. You'll like that. But I'm also a critic, so I have to really look deep into all the movies that I see. And if I see something that really sticks out, I'm going to address it. The big scene in this movie that everyone points to as being controversial and kind of anti-American is when they're in the 1940s on Lagos Island. The Godzilla source attacks a bunch of American soldiers, but leaves the Japanese soldiers alone. Even Ashiro Honda came out and said, yeah, you went a little too far with that. And Kazuki Amore's response to all the controversy with this scene was, the extras just liked getting killed by Godzilla. They were having so much fun getting stomped around and knocked all over the place by the big G. Which, if it was that one instance, I could let it slide. But unfortunately, your main villains are American as well. And there is a lot of evidence in this movie that King Ghidorah represents American colonization and Godzilla represents Japan defending itself. Because the story that people from the future made about Godzilla wiping out Japan was total bullshit. In the 23rd century, Japan actually becomes the most powerful nation in existence. So these people from the future that are American go back in time to the 20th century to destroy Japan with King Ghidorah. And they even say this in the movie, 
We'll destroy all except Tokyo, then we'll show the Japanese the proper way to rebuild their country. And there are only two people from the future that defect. One is Emmy, who is Japanese. The other is M11, who is an android, so he can obviously be reprogrammed. So yeah, watching all these scenes involving King Ghidorah destroying Japan and knowing that he's being controlled by Americans really made me go, so this is what a racial attack feels like. Huh. Interesting. Again, I'm not wildly offended by this, but it is something that makes me a little concerned watching it. Because there's something about Kazuki Amore where when it comes to human antagonists, he uses people that are any other race except Japanese. Because in Godzilla vs. Biollante, we had that Middle Eastern assassin running around, and this movie, your human villains are Americans. So I don't want to accuse Kazuki Amore as being racist, but there is something a little odd when the two Godzilla movies that he's directed have have human villains from other nations. Now, if they were aliens, I could let that slide, and it's just a coincidence that they're Americans. But no, they are people from the future, Earth's future, that come back in time to try to reshape Japan's future, and they're not Japanese. So, that's one of the things, watching this movie again, that actually bumped this movie down a bit in terms of my favorite Godzilla films. So talking about all that has just really made my brain hurt, but let's talk about the thing in this movie that really makes everyone's brain hurt when it comes to this movie. The time travel element. They go back in time to erase Godzilla from history. So why does everyone in the 90s still remember Godzilla when they return? Does Godzilla, the return of Godzilla, and Godzilla vs. Biollante still exist in the continuity? There are a lot of fans that have gone over this in other videos and other articles, so I'm just going to deliver the Cliff Notes version. So yes, those three movies still exist in this continuity, and that's because the godzilla Saurus that they transported from Lagos Island to the Bering Sea is not the same godzilla Saurus that became Godzilla in 1954. The one that they transported from Lagos to the Bering Sea ended up becoming the Godzilla that we see in The Return of Godzilla that was irradiated by the Russian nuclear sub. So the Godzilla in this movie is the same one that was in the last two movies. And he destroys another nuclear submarine, so his size is increased from 80 meters to 100 meters. And that's the Cliff Notes version. If I'm going to go into this in more detail, especially given that time travel is involved, I'm going to explode. Because any movie that involves time travel, no matter how well it's set up, like in Back to the Future, it's going to make your head spin if you think about it too much. So I'm just going to skip right to the rating. Earlier in this review, I said that this is my favorite Godzilla movie in the second series. I actually want to take that back, because really going over this movie, and especially with the idea that this could be anti-American, I think The Return of Godzilla edges this one out. Another reason The Return of Godzilla edges this movie out is because this movie has some blatant ripoffs to The Terminator, right down to the point where the actor playing M11 looks eerily identical to Robert Patrick as the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And this movie rips off Terminator in so many ways that when you watch it, it's almost kind of cute. Like, oh, you thought you were going to get away with ripping off The Terminator, but... No. I mean, the advantage that The Return of Godzilla has is that it's its own thing, and the political angles with that movie are more compelling. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is a more entertaining movie, but it doesn't make it better. So this movie is good, but it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. It does have some of the best action sequences, but there is also a lot in this movie that keeps it from being the all-time greats, at least for me. So yeah, in terms of Godzilla movies that I like better than this, We'll save that for the last review. Once I go over my updated ranking on all the Godzilla movies, you'll find out which movies I prefer above this one. And that's my review for Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Next up is going to be a Godzilla movie that I'm mixed on. This is another instance with the fans where I'm just kind of in disagreement with them. And that's Godzilla vs. Mothra. No, I don't hate Mothra, but... Well, I'll elaborate tomorrow. So until tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on the movie, if and when you've seen it. And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.